Drummers Only is the UK's leading drum shop with store locations in Glasgow and Leeds. Be sure to like, subscribe, and let's do this. Hello. How are we all? Good evening. Welcome to another... Good evening. Oh, hello. Wow. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't Hi. Think, he's doing the board as well. Hi. <laughs> Hi there. Um, we've already got a comment. We've already got a comment already. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Here we yeah, go. We're, they're yeah. flying in. We're, we're, in, we're in. We're going to look at, or we're going to talk about who our favourite drummers are. Three favourite drummers. Adam did have five and then changed it to three because he figured if we talked about our five favourite drummers, we'd be here all night. I feel like we might be here for a while with our three favourite drummers, to be honest. Perhaps. I mean, who knows? Do what Mr. Kevin Raython has already done, guys, and please... Uh, and Carol Sigward, please comment on who your favourite drummers are. If you're listening back to this on the podcast, um, you obviously can't do that. Well, maybe you can. I don't know. You could maybe comment on your podcast platform. Don't do it while driving, though. Would not recommend that. No. Um, I always forget that people can listen back to this. I always forget when I'm talking about things that it's not always going to be live for people. So apologies. If you are listening back, email us your favourite drummers. Yeah, do that. We had dead air for a second there, but mm. I think we're all good now. Cool. Who's your well favorite drummer? It's no. Or who's your top three? Sorry. Well, do you want all three of them at um, once? I would say go all three, ranging in order. So like three, two, and then one. Okay. Didn't expect that. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, if you don't have them in that order, that's also no, okay. No, I can I can provide. Oh, Dave Abrazis is watching. Wow. That's quite good. Evening, Dave. Good evening, Dave. Hello, Dave's a legend. Hello. He played for Pearl Jam in the nineties. You've, you've, you, I can see you actually going a bit, a bit red right now. I mean, that's, that's, that's cool. pretty, it's pretty rad. It is pretty see, rad. you just never know who's going to appear oh. on a drummer's only live video. I'm quite, uh, I'm quite impressed. Um, so obviously, our favourite drummer is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remember watching. I actually genuinely remember when um, Pearl Jam unplugged, hit MTV, and watching this guy plays like who's the dude with the super long hair playing the dw drums really 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 well and then kind of getting like mad into pearl jam we should get him on the podcast yes we should dave if you're up for a podcast we'll drop us a line and we'll hook that up for sure absolutely that would be so cool mm -hmm. absolutely yeah okay <laughs> So, I don't quite know how we transition no, out of we this just, now. We just, we just talk about um, <laughs> our, our, our favourite drummers. Um, three, two, one. Okay, my third place is kind... Of, the, 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 the drummers that I've picked have... Uh, I've picked them because... Um, Sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. but Dave's up for it. Oh, amazing. Cool. We will do that. We will do that. Absolutely. We should get user questions for that as well. Anyway, yes. unless the questions. Um, I've, I've picked them because of music rather than drumming. If that makes sense like okay so i've listened to lots of music involving these drummers and it's always been like yay been like what sorry yay <laughs> <laughs> okay if you're just listening to this chris mm -hmm. just raises sums in the air like you just don't care yeah absolutely um so three is a kind of tie between peter erskine and, Ke and eric harland um because okay. I was the jazz guy for a hot minute, do you remember? Um, when everybody decided that <laughs> I was the never jazz forgot, guy. never forgot, ever. Um, and so it's a kind of tie between these two. Right. In second place is VC. Vinnie Collier. Vinnie Collier. Yeah. And in first place is JC. Jimmy Chamberlain. Jimmy Chamberlain. Not Gemma Collins. No. Cause I think she, no, Jimmy Chamberlain. Okay. Yeah. What okay. about you? And, and do you want me to, and shall I go into why? Well, yeah, it's, that, that, that's, that's, it's a conversation, isn't it? Well, I thought you were going to go and then... No, right, okay, what's the so point? Because then people so, will have forgot. So, Honestly, amateurs. It's as if he's never done a podcast before. I'm going home. <laughs> um, <laughs> Peter Erskine, when you listen to Peter Erskine play, it doesn't matter who he's playing with. He A, always sounds absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, his gear sounds amazing. His touch on the instrument sounds amazing. Like he can make a ride cymbal sound like no one else. And he always makes the right choices. And we were listening to something today, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. There's some I, real I've, funky stuff. I've been listening to his audiobook called No Beethoven, which is an autobiography and a chronicle of his time with Weather Report. But at the end of said book, he puts back to back like 10 tracks that he thinks highlight his drumming. And there's one track in particular. They're not named. I don't know what the name of the track is, so I need to try and find out somehow. But the groove is next level. Right, wow. It's absolutely next level from, like, how simple yet how funky it feels from the sound of his kit. Just everything, the chop when he plays a fill-in, the choices he makes, how he doesn't really hit a crash till, like, later on in the track. So it builds intensity. All these things. Amazing. 
Cool. Amazing wow. player. One of my favorite ever jazz albums is an album called Standards that he did as a oh, trio. Here we go. Shut here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he plays, and it's recorded live with two microphones, and it, it was Grammy nominated for sound. That's amazing! It, wow, it That's is really amazing. Cool. So they recorded it in this auditorium in LA, and the balance he gets on the kit with the trio is just next level. The guy's like on another planet. Of good. Now you've Peter Eskins taught you, hasn't he? He has. Um, when I was at college, he was doing a, a gig with the Scottish National Jazz Orchestra, where they were playing the music of Weather Report. But part of the gig was he did a master class with the students. He absolutely rinsed all of us. Wow. Like, like just went through his all. Like yeah, man. Critiquing yeah. the playing. Like critiquing the playing, yeah. Uh, you could call it critiquing the yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think out of like 40 students, three got out alive where they received either no feedback <laughs> or a casual, yeah, that was better, you know. But Scolded. Wow. Oh, I mean, aye. Thick skin required to... to to work in those conditions, you know, but that, when you listen to his book and you listen to him talk, I mean, some of the doings he's had <laughs> over the years would, would, there's enough to make you want to stop playing. Like the way that people yeah. would speak to him, either on the stage mm -hmm. or in rehearsals or, yeah, yeah really. Well, you, you were telling me earlier on that that's kind of, he's, that's how he's learned, you know, and mm. he obviously, he can only portray what he's learned i suppose uh, absolutely ah uh, you know that it was back in the, the sort of 70s and 80s when these guys were coming through it was all uh learned the hard way you know there's some real um just listen to the book if you if, if you're interested in all that stuff the way joe zavano treated him in weather report was bonkers at times mm -hmm. you know absolutely crazy um so we've got peter eskin mm -hmm. who else eric harland i think is one of the just as, as a modern jazz player is maybe one of the best going he's amazing um just bonkers talented the speed at which he can play at the, the the level at which he can improvise at is just on another level mm -hmm. um again his touch on the instruments phenomenal i've met him too i met him at the uk drum show after his Name performance dropper. i'm gonna trip up on these names um and again amazing just it's, it's kind of hard to describe if you don't play jazz music or listen to jazz music but he's ridiculously talented too mm, so yeah check him out and then obviously Jimmy well, chamberlain well, Jimmy's I feel the, like you spoke like, about that a lot in the yeah, podcast. Yeah, Vinny's well. no, Vinny was number two. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I mean, Vinny kind of speaks for himself. Um, this one's for Paul because Paul will laugh at this. He, Vinny changed the modern face of palm drumming <laughs> <laughs> with his playing on Sting's Ten Summoner's Tales. So, like, I mean, Vinny can. I think Vinny is the most rhythmically gifted drummer on the planet. Mm. Like, I think Vinny can play anything. I would agree with that. And you just you kinda just have to look at his discography yeah. to see that he can literally play anything. Yeah, you, you know, know, the, the rumors All the Zappa of, stuff's ridiculous. Like, yeah, the the rumors of when he started with Zappa, they went into the studio to record a single and stayed for a month and made Joe's garage. Like mm -hmm. because Zappa found out what Vinny could do, you know, how well he could mm -hmm. play and and all these things. And again, you don't get um to have a discography like that and a back catalogue of, of, of work like that if you can't do it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, he's a he's a monster player. I got to see him in Glasgow with Jeff Beck, wow. which was amazing. Um, so I'm just going to divert a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Abrizzi, who is Abrizzi's. still watching, Abrizzi's, sorry, apologies, um, has chimed in. He's still watching, mm -hmm. so hi. Um, Ray Luzier is a monster player live. I would, I would imagine so. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine he is. I was, in fact, one of my stories about one of my favourite drummers involves Real Easier in a way. Oh, okay. In a way. It doesn't, it's not Real Easier, but it involves him. Um, Carry on. Carl Sigward says, Dave Weckl is better than Vinny. Um, well, you know, Vinny, it's my opinion, <sighs> um, let's, Carol. Let's just find that can of worms. <laughs> Hang on. Um, and as uh, much as Dave being better is, is your opinion. I think... Um, they are very, very different players. Those guys, very, very different players. I think Vinny's more of an improviser and, and Dave is more of a, a sort of practised player. So what I mean by that is the, the, the things he plays are, are perhaps a little bit more worked out. And that's not a critique. I just prefer Vinny's improvisational um, thing, you know. How cool would it be getting Vinny on a podcast? I mean... I, I, he I, has I, his own, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. I mean, I probably... I, I don't know if I would be able to actually talk. <laughs> I, do, like, I, I don't know if I would ask him. How's your cornflakes this morning? Yeah. You know, like how do you take well, the, your tea? Well, the thing with these guys is that they've been interviewed so many times. It's trying to find out like questions where the question has the question hasn't been asked. Vinny, uh, sorry, uh, Jimmy, for sure. Like 
he's my number one guy. I mean, like, so in all the time I've known you, like, that's always been consistent. Like, you've always loved yeah. the JC. Yeah, I grew up on a, a diet of, of grunge music. Um, so, like, the so Pearl Jam, the Pumpkins, and Soundgarden, and all these bands were in my sort of CD player, but the Pumpkins won out, like, enormously. Um, mm. And I don't know what... It, it's the music as well, but, like, when... You started to hear that music. Jimmy had a swing inside, or has a swing in his playing that other guys didn't have around that time. They were a bit straighter. Um, and it, it, I think it was that. It was like the rim shot stuff, the ghost note stuff, the way he plays broken patterns on the ride. All that stuff just kind of added up the power. And when you got to see him play the first time around 2000 when the Pumpkins went out on tour for the last time. And it was the first time he hit his bass drum was kind of insane, you know, the volume and the power that came out of yeah. it. And just, yeah, all of that, man, just, yeah, like, he's, I think he's playing on Gish's is extraordinary still. We were listening to it in the, the short. That yeah, was the first record, Gish is the first Pumpkins record in 91. We had it on in the short on Saturday, Monday, maybe, I can't remember what day. Tuesday, I think it was. was. It? And you can still, you can, it still stands up. You know, that playing still stands up for me. It's still. Is that right that he recorded that on an export? A pedal export? I think it was a BLX. I think oh, I got okay. that wrong, but it was a, it was a, five-piece pearl kit and i believe the snare drum was a, a recording custom steel i want to say um but yeah really simply on like a shoestring budget they did that record mm. i believe um and it's still amazing it's still so so fresh he's playing you know yeah so so those are my three that's cool who are your three well i've got three for three div three varying degrees of favorite so I don't know if I can actually name them. I mean, I've been unfair. I've asked you to name yours top three, mm -hmm. like in order, but I don't know if I can. Okay. Because they all they're all my favourite for different reasons. Mm -hmm. So Elan Rubin. Right. Listeners of the podcast before will know that I am a huge Elan Rubin fanboy. He's just he's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He's just he's he's the fact that like I mean it says a lot about a, a drummer when they've played Woodstock when they're eleven years old. Yeah, that's kinda wild. Do you know what I mean? That's pretty bonkers. Yeah. So Elan Rubin. Mm -hmm for uh for the grooves that pay the bills right um i would then say chris coleman this is relates to my real easier story <laughs> chris coleman nathan's just asked if he could borrow your tea cozy <laughs> so for those listening i'm wearing a hat because it is very cold in the glasgow shop um no nathan no you can't you can't borrow it it's mine <laughs> 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 um okay so we've got chris coleman chris coleman's been even before we worked in the shop in fact my first clinic working in the shop was chris coleman clinic wow. and I, I almost peed myself because right. i was so excited was that in uh the west end of glasgow was it in the university yes it union. was, it was union. It? Yeah. yeah it was I in the union couldn't yeah. Think of the word um, okay yeah and he played a, a rest, red sq1 mm -hmm. that yeah. we had yeah and um, that's right and he got people up to jam with him and he played bass that's right yeah that's right that was really cool mm -hmm. so him for the thrills because right. i think you know obviously he's, he's an exceptional player and like i'm quite sure that he can do the twos and fours very easily mm -hmm. but for his thrills of just what he can do around the kit i think it's pretty phenomenal and then lastly who did i write down because i actually wrote I, it down you can't remember. I remember i think i remember ah of course dave Grohl. yeah i mean DG's DG, isn't he? It's it's the obvious choice, you know. It's Taylor Hawkins' birthday today, but <laughs> I prefer Dave Grohl. So I think it's, I mean, like I think what do you all... what about Dave do you prefer over Taylor? I think when you listen to Nevermind, right, the power behind Dave's drumming, just even like you know, it was it was the vibe that they were going for mm. in the day, you know, when Butch Vig recorded it all, you know, it was just it was like that was the, the energy, the the aggression. Obviously, mm. that was what made. Never mind what it was, and especially <laughs> like you know songs like you know, Lithium and all that. Mm. And um, you can just like, he's got a real power about his playing. And I've I've told this story in the podcast before, but when I saw Foo Fighters live, there was it was a couple of years ago in Glasgow, um, and there was a moment where they do it all the time now. But Taylor comes off the kit, and Dave sits behind the kit, and uh -huh. they do under pressure. Right. And there was a moment where um, Taylor was introducing all the various members of the band. And then at the end of it, he was like, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dave Grohl. And he played the fill-in for the start of Smells Like Teen Spirit. Right. And I, I swear on my life, 
it sounded identical to the record. We yeah. spoke about this because remember we did an episode about drummers who have a sound. Yes. And I, 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 I'm convinced it was like as if someone had just started playing the record wow. like through his snare sound. Now, obviously, there's so many, like who knows what kit he played on like when mm. he recorded it. I can't remember. I'm mm. sure it's out there. Oh, it will be. It'll be documented somewhere. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, Taylor's set up, especially live, you know, there's so much going against it and like there's, yeah. it's very different, you know, so... yeah. I think for that reason alone, I was like, "Wow, he's just phenomenal." And of course, he's a phenomenal person. Like, he just—he's the nicest man in rock and roll. Yeah, so they say, and and I mean, he's, I think he's proven that hundreds of times. You've listened to his book right now. His book, so I finished it. Oh, did yeah. you? Okay. And it's 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 incredible. Just like I mean, it, obviously, a lot of it is kind of. I spoke to my father-in-law about this about it's being like dramatized mm-hmm. because obviously it wouldn't be like, you know, it's not like oh, I was driving down the road. You know, yeah. that's not very interesting. <laughs> but it's like along in my was, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, totally. Um but it's like you'll like you'll be like, Oh, I was driving down this road and like I just happened to pass someone and they were wearing a vanity shirt and it brought all these emotions back and all that kind yeah. of stuff. You know, it's like it's very that kind of way, but the actual stories that come out of it about how they like when he joined Nirvana and when obviously the Foo Fighters started coming about mm. some of his stories about travel and stuff it's just like you know yeah. like not real I guess relatable because it's like well the, the, one of the things I think is interesting if you look at these guys in these bands around about that time they just immediately became famous like there wasn't any ramp up yeah and he talks about that Dave talks about that in his book like spoiler if, if you've not listened to The Storyteller by Dave Grohl um but he talks about it how like all of a sudden like there was like obviously they they call them jocks mm-hmm. like there was like jocks appearing at nirvana shows yeah. like as smells like teen spirit was on the radio and stuff yeah. and he's like these people used to beat me up yeah and now they're coming to see my band play yeah. like this is really weird and obviously then the, the venues would just get bigger on the tour that they were they were like doing to launch the album mm, yeah and he's like it was a lot to handle yeah know? i think like Billy Corgan talks about that a lot and Jimmy's talked about it a lot. Like the Pumpkins, at one point, I think, had the biggest double-selling album of all time. And that was like talking about it outsold Tommy by The Who, it outsold Physical Graffiti by Zeppelin, it outsold The Wall by Pink Floyd. It was this ridiculously, ridiculously massive album. And then all of a sudden you're on, you're in every magazine going, you're touring the world for, you know, you're out, you're away from home for like a year and a half just on a massive world tour. It must be bonkers to try and wrap your head around. It's, it's crazy. And that's where, like, to kind of bring this, I guess, full circle, that's why Elan Rubin's also one of my favourite drummers because mm-hmm. he is more of a sideman. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of got all that. Obviously, I mean, goes without saying, he can play like a monster. Yeah. Um, For a great example, Elan's playing, you know, you just have to listen to the self-titled Paramore record. Yeah, I love that And record. it is, is, is playing on that's <clears> ridiculous. <throat> I mean, he played for loads of other people yeah, as well, yeah, like Angels Nails and Airwaves. And like, um, he played, he does currently play for um, Nine Inch Nails. Oh, is he still doing that? Yeah, he's right, still. I didn't, I didn't know he was still doing that. Yeah, he's still doing the Nine Inch Nails gig. So, I mean, like, just all of that stuff is, is phenomenal, but he obviously gets the the glory of that without having to worry about doing the press side of it necessarily. Mm. You know, he just has to come in and play the drums. Yeah. You know, which I yeah. think is really cool, and he does it really well. Yeah. You know, he does yeah. his own solo stuff as well, which, you know, he, he kind of does a. a Dave Grohl Foo Fighters esque thing where he records everything himself, right. sings on it, and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, He's got this weird um, ambidextrous thing going on, doesn't he? Where he can play open handed or closed handed, and well, all like, that. Well, I, th- I think the open handed thing I read in an interview that the open handed thing just came out of like he basically found a drum kit in his dad's garage and he just taught himself how to play. But like he'll go from playing left hand lead to right hand lead when it goes to the right symbol and things, eh? Yeah, I think that's just because he's amazing amazing yeah <laughs> he's just he's just so yeah. good yeah Who, okay so there's been like a whole load of, of of drummers popped on here so let's just talk about some of these man yeah, wayne so. bird says keith moon neil pert and mickey d i mean three legends right there i don't know enough about mickey d but i mean neil pert and, and keith moon I mean, just tremendous you know yeah. i think a lot of, I think keith moon unfairly gets a lot of um he was mental kind of of chat but if you listen to some of that music i mean that cherry bomb and a bass drum yeah so yeah like, oh, there is all the kind of kind there's, of there's, there's, there's the, the showbiz side of it yeah but like, like you the, listen the to some, some of those tunes and the grooves on some of those tunes are ridiculous you mm-hmm. know i still think bab o'reilly's one of the groovinest tunes going groovinest tunes going that's a quote uh, doogie miller uh, current faves are justin scott Calvin Rogers and um, Richard Spaven. Yeah, all kind of, Oh, James Dent says Dave Garibaldi. Man, there's so many legends here. Yeah, there's some amazing names here. Travis Barker. What does Aaron Gull say? Travis so, Barker. Yes. Man, he's amazing. 
he's amazing. I um, I wasn't into Blink like growing up at all. Like I came to Blink really late, like in the last five years. Mm. And that's playing on Enema of the States, crazy. Yeah. Um, some of the fills he gets away with playing is just bonkers, you know. And not just playing those fills, but playing those fills at speed. Totally, well. totally, like, and doing it live in front of like um festival audiences and stuff. You know, yeah. it's it's he's amazing. Do you know what? Speaking of that, actually, do you know what? It's, it wasn't until recently that he started using linear monitors. Really? Yeah, he, d- he didn't use monitors or anything. Wow. So, so he, he he literally played a blank set from memory, <laughs> and the rest of the band just had to follow him. <laughs> That's. Kind it's, of, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Like, well, yeah, you see him on the Glastonbury stage, and don't I've never twigged that there's not a monitor near him. Yeah. You know that's. I cool. mean, I, I like this was so that's that's not my knowledge. That's that's knowledge from knowledge. So I, right. I learned that from Mike Johnson. Right. Mike Johnson tells that story on another podcast, um, where he's like, "Yeah, I was behind the scenes and I saw a Blink play, and I just noticed that Travis had no in ears, had no monitor at all. The band were just following him. He Jesus. was just, he's literally like." one of those wind up monkeys to just wound them up <laughs> at the side of the stage and just let them go lee know. lee lamb has said um dean castronovo and mike portnoy i remember going to see sticks foreigner and journey did a show in glasgow and todd Zuckerman was obviously playing for sticks he plays for the guy that plays for pink what's his name again mark Schulman. mark Schulman was playing for foreigner and dean castronovo was playing for journey and they were doing, uh, Johnny were doing a ballad, I can't remember what song it was, and it became apparent that the engineer had muted the drum mics, and it only became apparent he muted the drum mics when Dean Castronovo played this fill that could still be heard over the band without any dr- drum mics. Wow. Maybe one of the loudest drummers I've ever heard. It was amazing. Like, like, oh, the engineer was like, oh, mics, you know, like, because you, <laughs> you could hear Whoops. the toms. You, like, he hit them, he was hitting them so hard. You could still hear them bonkers, you know. That's insane. Dave Abrazies, again. Manu Cashi changed the game for me with what he did with Peter Gabriel. So incredibly creative. Agreed. There's yeah, that's that story. You've I've heard you telling that story to customers before. Well, about- there's, a, there's an interview. Um, Drumhead Magazine, which is a magazine run by the drummer Jonathan Mover, did an interview with Manu Cashi, and he talks about recording this, the album So with Peter Gabriel. And they had finished tracking... And a taxi was coming to take Manu back to the airport. And Gabriel said to him something like, I have this other track. The drums are already done, but will you have a go at it? And he was like, yes, but you get one take. In fact, two takes, because Gabriel was notorious for doing take after take after take. And he did two takes of what became Sledgehammer. And they apparently used take one. Madness. He, he listened, to the, he listened down to the track and then played it. And they used the first take. Which is kind of bonkers. Yeah, um, he's really talented, really talented. Well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I know There's um, some, some righteous names getting thrown James, around. James, uh, James Dent here, David Garibaldi, Todd Zuckerman, mm-hmm. and Dennis Shombros. Um, all three legends. I mean, we spoke to Todd on the podcast. Yep. You know, not to um, name drop another, another. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my buddy Todd. Yeah, cool, <laughs> lovely. I mean, all those guys are amazing. Yeah, incredible players. Garibaldi changed the way that a lot of that music got played. Um, with with some of the things he did, as did Dennis Chambers. I mean, Dennis Chambers was playing for Parliament when he was eighteen years old. You know, just out touring, just an absolute monster. You know, yeah, amazing, amazing. Levin Helm times three. Um, yeah, That's I mean, Craig Brownlee has said, yeah. uh, who Levin Helm from Levin the band, oh, okay, the the, right. the band, the band. He was I amazing. I am unfamiliar. Well, there's your education on the road home. Yeah, you know. See, this is partly why I thought it'd be good for us to do this because you might find out about drummers that you oh i mean yeah some of the the the, for sorry if this is patronizing at any point but some of the younger listening audience may find guys that they've never heard of before and that's um i think that's really valuable for them you know really valuable to go back and listen to albums with you know you think you think something's hip and new and then you go back 20 years and listen to you like wow okay okay so that got played like 20 years ago by Mm -hmm. somebody i've never heard of before and on the flip side of it you know you could get newer players recommending to the older audience absolutely you know yeah yeah guys absolutely. that they may not have heard of who yeah, are blowing totally. up yeah yeah um you know it's it's really really easy to just listen to the same thing all the time mm, you know and, sure. and and not find out new players but i think it's really valuable to find new players you know having said that i mean i still listen to paramore's self-titled album for the <laughs> lands played all day some of the grooves he plays on that album are 
absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you've not listened to it, you should check I it out. I love the track, um, Daydreaming. Daydreaming's a good one. It's a great track. Um, you now, know, it's just... really good because when you actually watch him play it live, he does this, like, he does this really weird pattern, not really weird pattern, but he does like a boom, jip, 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 on the feet. Mm-hmm. But then obviously doing like single strokes and paradiddles mm. over it and that obviously creates a groove. Yeah, it, but which sounds really simple to do until you actually try and do it. Didn't he play like a left hand clave part on the bridge of um, Still Into You on a jam block? It's, it's a right hand clave right, part right. because he uses his left hand to keep the so, groove going. Yeah, so he plays a groove and a clave part at the same time. At the same time. And then on the second part of that bridge section... Mm-hmm. He then throws in the toms as well. Jesus, we should find um, like a live video of that and and link it because I think it's really hip. Yeah, it's cool. It is really amazing. Yeah. It's really amazing. Man, cool. This has been a good chat. I could it chat has. about drummers like this. We've all got day. famous drummers in the chat. I know. So there you go. I mean, I unfortunately never ever got to see Dave Abrazi's play. Um, that would have been amazing. Um, because I don't think Pearl Jam came over to the to Glasgow when I was into them when he was in the band mm-hmm. um, they came, they've, I think they've actually only been to Glasgow once in like the last 25 years or something you know which is rubbish chat it's a crime it is a so crime, it is, it is a crime. Um, last one is from Lee Lamb one of the cleverest guys I've seen is Akira yeah, Jimbo yeah Akira Jimbo's amazing um, really 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 talented he does all the um, he triggers all the, the loops and all that at the same time you ever seen it? do you know I was actually looking for, for some reason the idea of getting an Akira Jimbo um, signature snare popped into my head the other night and mm-hmm. so I googled him and just looking at all the, like his rig alone because I'd never seen it before um, it's huge eh? it's, it's pretty bonkers and he, he would do the Pirates of the Caribbean theme oh he, I've not seen that oh he does it he plays the Pirates of the Caribbean theme but he triggers all the loops at the same time as playing the groove so instead of it on being on a backing track he's triggering off all the loops and stuff um, so yeah amazing nice that was yeah. a good chat Yeah, it was a good chat good. thank Can't you wait. for taking part guys um, it, it makes it uh, great all the, all the much more fun when, when you do drop us a line like this yeah. and we can have a chat. If you're listening to this or watching this later, obviously you can um, join us on regular Facebook mm. Lives where we ask mm. questions like this all the time. We yeah. do live podcasts and obviously we're going to be getting Mr. David Abrazis on the podcast, aren't we? Absolutely, absolutely we are. Sorry, um, Stephen Maxwell just popped on to say that I hope one of Chris is Chris's top three is Gail Whitehouse. Yeah, my wife is one of the best drummers going. Yeah. Good thanks, save, thanks, Good Stevie. I, I, if it, I, I don't know where I'd be without you, man. Stevie set you up for that through yeah. up in the air, and you just not like, right like she legitimately can play really, really well. Yeah, like just throwing that out there. It's not a, it's not a flex. She, <laughs> she can actually do it. My wife is <laughs> ain't, no, ain't nobody flexing. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, Kevin Reith and somebody here. Yeah, man. Um, the commentary has been great on this. Dave Abrazis, thanks for taking part. We will drop you a line because I would love to have you. Uh, for an interview so yeah we will we will figure we will hook that up figure it out hook you up yeah mm-hmm. yeah um bring up the card so that people can find out where Ba-boom. to get it is there we go so if you want to phone either the branches glasgow is 0141 429 and leeds is 0113 if you want to email us you can do so at info at drummersonly.co.uk or if you need leads don't forget we have a podcast the drummers only radio podcast um the latest episode we have um well, the last interview we did was with Jay Weinberg. Yeah. Um, Jay, uh, Jake and Bryn were on talking about uh, what made them want to play the drums. The drums yeah. It's um, nice getting Bryn on a podcast. It absolutely was nice yeah. getting Bryn on a podcast. And yeah, we hope to have um, this will go on and we'll have other episodes come up in the future. Where Sweet. can you find us on the socials? You can find us um, across Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Obviously, you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube or one of the two at Drummers Only UK. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday whatever you have planned. Um, if you want to get in touch, we're open all weekend and 24-7 on drummersonly.co.uk. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, listening, all that stuff. Bye-bye. Bye.